we will switch over now here to our Kraken, who, um, as of today, are back from the All-Star break. And we have some news out of um, practice this morning. But first, we're going to get through our news on the first of the month. Uh, we found out that Vince Dunn was named the NHL's third star of the month for January. Uh, Dunn scored five goals, tallied 12 assists, totaling in 17 points across 15 games in the month of January for the Kraken. He was tied for the league lead among all skaters with a plus 18 rating to lift the Kraken uh, from fifth place in the division to first uh, on the strength of an NHL best 11 win, three loss, one overtime loss January. Dunn, who nearly doubled his scoring from his first 34 games of the season, uh, collected points in 11 of his 15 appearances, including a career-high nine straight outings from January 5th through 19th. He also posted an even or better plus-minus rating 11 times, highlighted by a career-best plus-six performance on January 14th against the Chicago Blackhawks. His 36 points are already a career high ahead of the 35 he compiled in 78 games back in 2018-19 with the Blues and matched uh, in 73 appearances last year with the Kraken um, in 21-22. This move, uh, this move, pardon me, this honor makes a lot of sense for Dunn. He's been on a tear all season long. Uh, he had a great January, obviously, and he's well in line for a big extension. Uh, the trade that we're going to talk about next has some people worried that Dunn is going to get moved or that Seattle might not want to pay him, so that's why they're going to move him. I don't think that's the case at all. I think people are just worried uh, with the trade deadline somewhat approaching. Uh which is in early, early uh, March. If, if you're Ron Francis, you're the general manager of the Kraken, it absolutely makes a ton of sense to extend Dunn, keep the pairing, the top D-man pairing of Lars and Dun Lars Larson. I said his short name. Uh, Larson and Dunn together, uh, considering Dunn's age, his performance, you know, the experience that he's got already in his career, I think it would be silly to do anything but extend Vince Dunn. So that's my take on it. There was some uh, debacle on Kraken Twitter this morning. I think it's silly, uh, which was which does relate to this trade that happened on the 5th. So the team traded for defenseman Jacob Megna with the San Jose Sharks. Seattle sends a fourth rounder of their choosing in this year's draft to San Jose for Megna. Seattle must decide which of their two fourth round picks they will send to San Jose by the 15th of June this year. Megna joins the Kraken, having totaled a career-best 12 points, one goal, and 11 assists in 48 games for the Sharks this year. His 12 points and 11 assists are both ranked fourth among Sharks defensemen, and he ranks fifth on the team in both blocks at 63 and hits at 75. So obviously he's bringing a physical aspect of it uh, to this team. He's six foot six as well, so keep that in mind. According to Natural Stat Trick, Megna owns a 54.9. Uh, percent Corsi rating, which is the fifth best mark among San Jose skaters. Uh, he's been particularly effective on the penalty kill for the Sharks. The Sharks PK percentage ranks at sixth in the league uh, at 82.6%. Uh, Megna was on the second unit. Megna was first on San Jose in relative uh, goals for percentage on the penalty kill. Uh, relative, relative goals for percentage percent uh, compares to the percentage of shot quality against a team generates a quality a team generates when players on the ice are versus not. So the underlying numbers for uh, Magna on the penalty kill are good. He's relatively bland on the offensive side of things, but it, it, it should be known that this is a depth acquisition. Seattle sends a fourth rounder. They've already got, they've got two of those fourth rounders. Now they've only got the one. This is likely just a depth move. It was what Ron Francis called it in the press release about the trade. There's worry that Justin Schultz might be out longer than expected. He was practicing with the team today, so I don't find that at all to be true. Again, I, I, I likely find this as depth. It's not like Magna's this big-name guy, uh, but this is a good depth piece, and a fourth-rounder uh, to trade for him is, is a pretty solid and should see some decent return from him. I'm not going to say it's this big uh, diamond in the rough acquisition, but I think it's a pretty solid one that might go under the radar. So looking ahead, we have games to look forward to uh, this week. Uh, four of them to be exact as Seattle be begins a tough five-game road trip. So Seattle sits at a 29-win, 15-loss, five-overtime-loss record at first in the Pacific Division. They are at 61 points in the standings. 
They play February 7th at the New York Islanders with a puck drop of 4.30 p.m. Pacific time. February 9th at the New Jersey Devils at 4 o'clock. February 10th at the New York Rangers at 4 o'clock. And then February 12th at the Philadelphia Flyers at 10 a.m. So a tough stretch there playing against good Islanders, Devils, and Rangers team. And then a potential trap game against Philadelphia there on the 12th for an early start.